All around the planet, people are awakening to the reality that humanity and the Earth are now entering a heightened phase of activity on their inseparable journeys of growth and expansion. This acceleration is marked by the increasing intensity of global events and by the rising temperature of nearly every planet in our solar system. While here on Earth, time itself seems to be speeding up and chaos mounting as phenomenal shifts occur in our physical and perceptual realities with increasing rapidity. The simplest explanation behind this sense of speeding up is that our planet's vibrational frequency is rising. This event, which many ancient cultures have prophetically termed the quickening, has begun, and it is the greatest opportunity of our time. For we are living in a period of tremendous change, where humanity's truths are shifting with exponential rapidity as today's more advanced technologies and awareness are working to reveal the new truths of tomorrow. And just as the perspectives of those who were born 50 or 100 years ago have had to shift to allow for our present version of reality, so too will we be invited to expand our perspectives of what is possible to allow for the unfathomable changes that will come with the turning of the age and the birth of a new world. That said, one very real possibility that our research into the work of other seekers and sages indicates is becoming increasingly probable is that the world-changing events that so many are consciously or subconsciously waiting to occur in 2012 could actually happen as early as October of this year, 2011. And though we have awakened to the possibility that our world could be greatly altered before 2012, it is not our intention with this presentation to prophesy events as they are going to occur, but rather we intend to merely present some possibilities that might serve to expand people's perspectives of what could be. For we believe that by expanding our imaginations to explore possible future events, we may prevent ourselves from reacting in fear should the previously unimagined become manifest. And as a result of having already experienced these events in our minds, we will be more centered and able to see the opportunities they present should they or something similar occur. And so, with this understanding of the power of imagination as a means by which we may navigate the unknown, this presentation will not only explore what sorts of events could occur between now and October that might lead to the end of the world as we know it, but we will also look at how such events, regardless of how challenging they may seem, could serve to bring humanity to a global experience of unity consciousness that would then lead us into a harmonious new existence and to our return to the long prophesied experience of heaven on earth. All around the planet, hundreds of millions of people are waiting for events to unfold in the year 2012 that they believe will bring either the birth of a harmonious new reality or the end of the world. But what if those world-altering events were actually to take place this year, in 2011? This anticipated period of great change and purification, which many believe will happen sometime between now and 2012, is referred to as the shift of the ages. And though there are those who believe that the shift is some grand event that is going to occur in the outer physical world, or in the cosmos at some point in the not too distant future, bringing either salvation or destruction to the world, there are others who believe that the shift is happening right now and in fact that it has been and will always be happening. For these people believe that the shift can be experienced at any moment by anyone who is willing to make the internal shift back to one. Where instead of seeing all beings and events of the world as separate and chaotic, the seeker learns to see that every aspect of existence is serving the divine plan by urging humanity to re-establish its faith and connection to the divine original source of creation, known to many as God or Great Spirit. For it is commonly understood both in the realms of science and spirituality that everything has come from one and that to one we shall return. However, today, 
Our thoughts and awareness have moved about as far from one as it is possible to get, as humanity's dualistic perspective and survival of the fittest mentalities have served to divide the world into dueling pairs of opposites, where many believe that they are good while others are evil, that they are light while others are dark, and that they are right while others are wrong. As a result, this divided perspective of existence has every human living for themselves, operating by his own personal will in an attempt to find inner peace by shaping the outer world according to his own likes and dislikes. However, what so many people are realizing today is that the peace we seek cannot be found by creating change in the world outside oneself, for true peace can only be found within. And we may see the truth of this when we consider that all around the world there are nearly 7 billion people who are trying to affect change in the world outside themselves in order to make others and the world match their vision of what is right so that they can find peace inside. However, when we realize that there are 7 billion people with 7 billion different visions of what the world should be like, then we may see that that peace we seek can never be attained by trying to shape the physical world according to our dualistic ideals of right and wrong, as our conflicting views will always result in the paradoxical need to fight for peace. And thus we may see that the only way to find true everlasting peace is to learn to be at peace with the way things are. And it is this holistic perspective that all is perfect as it is that is taught in the ancient practices of Buddhism, Taoism, and Yoga, as well as certain native spiritual traditions. And which is echoed in the words of the Taoist sage Lao Tzu, who says in the Tao Te Ching, True perfection seems imperfect, but is perfectly itself. Faith is the key to finding this perfection in all. For when one learns to see that all beings and events exist for the divine purpose of encouraging us to seek and find that eternal peace inside, then we may learn to see that all is in fact serving the divine, and therefore all is divine. And by thus establishing faith that every event that happens in one's life occurs to assist their soul's evolution, one may come to see that salvation is not a person, place, or pride. It is a state of mind. For in this faithful state, and the love that accompanies it, one is able to face and flow through all of life's challenges in grace and gratitude. Thus it is this ability to see all as one and all as divine that marks the individual's inner shift and return to one. And so while some people believe that the approaching shift will be an external earthly or cosmic event, and others an internal evolution, there are still others who believe that the shift that is about to happen will be both. These people find truth in the familiar phrase, conflict breeds consciousness, and believe that many humans need some major shift in their outer physical reality in order to encourage them to make the inner shift that will enable them to return to one. Thus it is thought by some adherents to this perspective that the physical events that are set to unfold in the next few months leading up to the end of October 2011 have been designed to escalate to such a dramatic level that most of humanity will be faced with the possibility of their own death and the loss of everything that they have worked to achieve in the material world, all of which would occur for one divine purpose. For in a world where so many are living only for material achievement and survival, it will not be until that material reality is threatened with extinction, and when money and luxury fail to satisfy our needs for peace and comfort, that the majority of people will awaken to the worthlessness of material wealth and success, and thereby be inspired to seek inwards to find a new purpose and meaning for life. And in so doing, many will finally understand the words that they have been uttering for so long, which state that we are not human beings having a spiritual experience, but rather we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And thus, when the events of the next few months have served their divine purpose, and when the death and destruction have shaken us from our material obsessions and given birth to our awareness of the eternal spirit that connects us all, we will learn to see the world in a new way, where even death and destruction, which humanity has denied and feared for so long, are seen to have a place and a purpose for which to be thankful and loving. 
And as these increasingly intense events unfold in the coming months, they will teach humanity the lessons of pride and humility by demonstrating the futility of our efforts to control the world outside of ourselves. And when people finally tire of wishing that the world was something that it isn't, and when they learn to be at peace with the way things are, for they see it all as part of the divine plan, and may they also learn to see that exerting one's personal will to try to stop these events from happening would be like trying to stop others from having the same opportunity for learning. For it is our selfishness and our ignorant use of free will that has brought us collectively into our present state of existence. Therefore, perhaps it is only by a 180 degree reversal to selflessness to the complete and utter surrender of ourselves and our personal will to the divine will of the Tao, that we may allow the forces of true change and redemption to work through us and liberate us completely from the unholy illusion of this world. And for this reason, some believe that it will be the tremendous shifting of outer events in the months between now and October 28, 2011, that will inspire humanity's inner shift helping them realize that we cannot, nor are we meant to change our outer world in order to find peace. But rather we are urged to turn inward, to seek and find the eternal peace that comes when one learns to see the divine purpose and perfection of all. And it is with this unified perspective of existence that one learns to relinquish my will for thy will, thereby realigning themselves with the divine will and marking their long-awaited return to one. So when will these major changes occur in our outer reality that will encourage humanity to make its inner shift back to one? For the past few years, hundreds of millions of people around the world have been preparing themselves for an event that they believe will occur on December 21st, 2012, that will either bring the end of the world or the birth of a new reality. However, an understanding of the Mayan calendar discovered through Swedish researcher Carl Kalman's study of ancient Mayan monuments, when compared with the escalating intensity of upcoming global events, shows the probability that those world-altering events could happen in the next few months between now and October 28, 2011. Considering the recent development of upcoming earthly and cosmic events that are set to unfold this year, which we will discuss shortly, this shift of perspective from 2012 to 2011 is one that people all over the world are starting to awaken to. While even the Mayans themselves, who have never given a specific date for when we could expect these big changes to occur, as they see the shift more as a process that occurs over time than an event that occurs on a given day, even the Mayans are now saying that great change will come in 2011. And thus it is our intention with the presentation of the following information to encourage people to prepare for the possibility that the world could be greatly changed this year. For the magnitude of shifting events that are set to unfold in the next couple of months could be so great that anyone caught still waiting for things to happen at the end of 2012 might be so shocked by the suddenness of events that all they will be able to do is react in fear, thereby making them more easy to control while at the same time blinding them to the divine purpose and opportunities that are present in the moment. That said, let us explore Kalaman's work and how it illustrates October 28, 2011 as the end of the Mayan calendar and the birth of a new reality. Though to many the Mayan pyramid is simply a monument used for ceremonies and sacrifices, Kalaman's research reveals that the Mayan pyramid is in fact a calendar of evolving consciousness. For each of its nine steps, also known as waves or underworlds, are related to a specific type of consciousness that is learned during the period of time that it takes us to move from the beginning of each step towards its end. Which in doing so, it is said we are moving from seed to fruition of the consciousness that is the focus for that level. Interesting to note is that each step of the pyramid or underworld is divided into 13 equal segments comprised of alternating dark and light energies referred to as days and nights, 
which are as necessary for the growth and expansion of our consciousness as the cycles of night and day are for the harmonious growth of our Earth's surface-dwelling ecosystem. These 13 equal segments of time are referred to as heavens, or stages of creation, each of which is related to a specific Mayan deity, and a stage of growth or learning that occurs during each period of time. Also essential to note here is that each time we step up a level on the pyramid, things speed up by 20 times, which it is said occurs because, as we learn the lessons toward the end of each step, the vibrational frequency of our collective consciousness, and therefore our reality, rises by 20 times. Thus, to illustrate how the Mayan pyramid is a calendar of evolving consciousness, and how it relates to the birth of a new reality by October 28, 2011, let us look at the bottom step of the pyramid referred to as the cellular underworld. This step charts the evolution of cellular consciousness from the time of the Big Bang to the creation of the first highly organized cells, and finally to the full realization of cellular consciousness. The period of time it takes to move from seed to fruition of this consciousness is 16.4 billion years, divided into 13 equal segments of 1.2 billion years, which means that during this phase of creation there occurred a subtle shift in consciousness every 1.2 billion years that brought the collective mind to a deeper experience of the cellular underworld. To explain this further, let's move to the eighth step on the pyramid, known as the galactic underworld, and whose focus for learning is ethical consciousness. Remember here that each time we move up a step on the pyramid, that things speed up by 20 times. And so, where consciousness at the bottom of the pyramid was changing roughly every 1.2 billion years, when we moved up to the eighth step, which began on January 5th, 1999, consciousness which on the step just below was changing every 19.7 years, and on the eighth step began to shift every 360 days, with a focus on the collective development of our ethical consciousness. This development of our ethics can be seen quite clearly when we look at the new perspectives that have arisen in the collective mind since January 1999. For it has been since this time that humanity has taken its greatest strides to purify its ethical perspective by realizing the impact that our choices have on the healthy, harmonious existence of ourselves, the earth, and all living things. And as a result of our growth and learning during this period, we have been raising the frequency of our collective consciousness and thus the vibratory rate of existence thereby resulting in the speeding up of everything by 20 times that occurs as we near the fruition of learning on each step of the pyramid. And it is this increase in the vibration of consciousness that is responsible for the sensation of the quickening that so many people are experiencing around the world. For as the vibratory rate of our consciousness speeds up, so does everything in creation, including time and awareness. To get a better understanding of the process of this quickening that is leading us to its climax on October 28, 2011, let us consider the seventh wave that began in 1755 AD at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, at which point consciousness began shifting roughly every 19.7 years, until January 5, 1999 when it sped up again and began shifting every 360 days. This is why we had what were referred to as generation gaps in the time before January 1999. Because prior to that date, our consciousness shifted at a slower rate. When a new thought was introduced to the world, it would take a longer period of time for our consciousness to assimilate that concept. For instance, when the perspective that women are equal to men was presented to the Western world, it took roughly 20 years for that seed of an idea to take root. However, for those who were alive for 40 or 60 years before that idea was presented, it could take longer for their perspective to switch, if it did at all, because they had spent so long seeing the world in a way that was different to what was now being presented. However, that all changed when we moved up to the eighth wave in January 1999, at the same time as the global proliferation of the Internet, for human consciousness then began to expand at an accelerated rate, as any new idea or concept that was created or realized could be immediately learned by anyone around the world 
regardless of how young or old they were. And because our perspective of the world was accelerating at a speed relative to the phenomenal global growth of the Internet, many people around that time experienced a sensation of quickening. And though this quickening is perceived by many as a speeding up of time, still others believe that it isn't time that is speeding up, but rather that it is the amount of change in information that we are able to process in that time that is accelerating. Thus aware of this concept of the quickening of consciousness, let's now look at the ninth step or wave, which began just recently on March 9, 2011, two days before the earthquake in Japan at which point consciousness, which was previously shifting every 360 days, is now shifting every 18 days, which it will continue to do until October 28, 2011, when it is said that we will come to the simultaneous completion and full realization of all nine underworlds at once. Which in other words means that around the end of October, every living thing, which is an individual thought of the collective mind, would somehow come to the simultaneous full realization of every level of creation from the moment of the Big Bang to the completion of the Mayan calendar on October 28th. And here it is thought that the only way that we could come to the simultaneous full realization of every aspect of creation is to become one with it. For no one knows you like you know yourself. And therefore, in order to truly know every aspect of creation, some believe that we will be given the opportunity to experience our oneness with everything that has and will ever exist, as if it were ourselves. And it will be through this experience of oneness that we finally realize truly who, what, when, how, and why we really are. This return to one is reflected in the scientific and spiritual teachings around the world, which uniformly agree in the expansion and contraction of the universe, and which also state that everything has come from one, and that to one we shall return. This concept of our return to one is also supported in the focus for learning during our current experience of the ninth wave, which is dedicated to the collective development of our unity consciousness, which Kalman's research indicates will be fully realized by October 28, 2011. Another strong indicator that the world-altering events which so many people are expecting to occur in 2012 could happen before October 28, 2011, has come from our recent understanding of what are known as the Hopi prophecies of the Blue and Red Star Kachina, and how they relate to the events that are unfolding right now, and which will culminate in the days and months before the end of October 2011. However, before we relate the story of the Blue and Red Star Kachinas, it is imperative that people have an understanding of the changeable nature of prophecy. For not all prophecies exist to tell us what is to be, but rather they tell us what we need to hear in order to inspire us to make changes to our inner being and perspectives that will ultimately assist our spiritual evolution. This is why, in many cases, prophecies such as the Hopi story of the blue and red kachinas speak of tragic events including the collapse of the material world and its systems, and even the ultimate demise of humanity. For it is a fact today that most humans in their obsession for material success and survival do not spare a second thought for their soul or spiritual self until they are faced with death, suffering, and the inevitable collapse of everything they have come to depend on in the material world. Thus we may see that these prophecies exist for the sole purpose of assisting humanity's evolution from a purely material-based consciousness to one of spirit. For it is by hearing these end-time prophecies and by seeing the signs of these prophecies fulfilled in current day events that one is given the opportunity to fully realize the temporary nature of our physical reality and thereby be inspired to seek out an understanding of the greater spiritual purpose of our existence. And though many in the world today will ignore these prophecies and stories of destruction because of their fear of contemplating the end of the material world as we know it, what so few people understand is that prophecies can be changed. First, it can be understood that the destructive stories and events detailed in prophecies 
exists for the sole purpose of encouraging a shift in consciousness, then it may be realized that once the collective mind has made that inner shift, the cataclysmic events that are no longer needed will eventually give way, as the group mind's vibrations are raised to match those of a harmonious new experience of reality, where there will be an entirely new set of lessons to be learned. Meanwhile, those who out of fear choose to deny our spiritual purpose and cling to the material world will be required to experience increasingly more destruction at an intensity that exactly matches that of their attachment to their material-based perspective of existence. For some, it will not be until they've experienced the complete destruction of the planet and all its life that they will finally be inspired to surrender their hate, fear, and pride and see the spiritual purpose and oneness of everything in existence. Having thus awakened to the spiritual reality of all as one, their soul would then rise to the spirit level, at which point they would join all of the other souls, energies and entities who have made the same choice to return to one. And here it is essential to realize that our reality is not, nor can it be changed by our fearful efforts of self-will, such as, let's focus our will to stop this from happening. For in any such effort, the lower limiting vibrations of fear that motivate people to try to control events will create blockages that prevent the free movement of the higher vibrations of divine love, will, and wisdom throughout the body. That said, we may see that through proper attention and an understanding of prophecies such as the Hopi story of the blue and red kachinas, people are given the opportunity to make a choice that will greatly affect their spiritual evolution. And it is the importance of this choice in our soul's journey that is reinforced by the appearance of the glyph representing the word choice on the Hopi monument known as Prophecy Rock. Thus the choice, which will become increasingly prominent in the days and months approaching October 28, 2011, is Will we choose to cling to our material perspective of existence and live in fear and hate as our physical world crumbles around us? Or will we, like a phoenix rising from the flames, choose with faith and love to see the divine purpose of the decline of our material existence, whose passing will inspire a once material obsessed humanity to shift to a more spirit-based perspective of existence? For it has been said in another message given to us by the Hopi people that this could be a good time. And for anyone who sees the spiritual purpose of the events that are set to unfold in the next few months, it probably will be. While those who wish to hold on to the old world and its ways might find the next few months extremely challenging. With this understanding of the divine purpose and the changeable nature of prophecy, let us now look at some information that has been surfacing from NASA in the past couple of months, and how it relates very clearly to the Hopi prophecy of the blue and red star Kachinas, thereby indicating that the world-altering events that so many people are expecting might occur in 2012 could happen as early as October 2011. Thus, the Hopi prophecy of the blue and red star Kachinas, which may be read in its entirety at the link below, speaks of four celestial bodies that will appear in our skies announcing that we have entered the end times. These four bodies are referred to in the prophecies as Pogongahoya and Palongahoya, the guardians of the North and South Poles, Nangasohu, referred to as the Blue Star Kachina, and the Red Star Kachina, also known as the Purifier. It is said in the prophecy that in the final days we will look up in our heavens and we will witness the return of the two brothers, Pagongahoya and Palongahoya, who helped create this world in the birthing time. In the final days, the blue star Kachina will come to be with his nephews, and they will return the earth to its natural rotation, which is counterclockwise. It is also stated in the prophecy that the return of the blue star Kachina, who is also known as Nangasohu, will be the alarm clock that tells us of the new day and a new way of life, that a new world is coming. This is where the changes will begin. Of extreme interest is the fact that NASA has recently, albeit quietly, released that there are three, what are presently being called comets, heading to Earth right now, all of which will be visible and in very close proximity to the Earth between the dates of August 15th and September 26th, 2011. 
Though the first body to make its pass will be Comet Honda, coming in from the south, and at its closest approach to Earth on August 15, 2011. A particular note is the body that people are referring to as Comet Elenin, which much research is showing is either a supermassive brown dwarf star or is being followed very closely by one. This conclusion has been derived from the fact that there have been three alignments with this comet, the Earth, and at least one other celestial body over the past year and a half. And each alignment has resulted in a major earthquake on Earth. To see the dates of these alignments for yourself, you may visit NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory webpage at the link below. Here you will see that the first alignment with Elenin occurred on February 23, 2010 on the same day as the massive earthquake in Chile. The next alignment on September 4, 2010, which corresponds with the recent earthquake in New Zealand. And there was a third alignment around March 11, on the same day as the major earthquake in Japan. The fact that these alignments all occurred when Elenin was a great distance away from the Earth indicates the incredible mass of the object and the probability that it is not a comet but rather a supermassive brown dwarf star, or that is being followed very closely by one. During our last alignment with this object, which was at the same time as the massive earthquake in Japan, Elenin was at a distance of 2.155 astronomical units, roughly two times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And now, we will have our next alignment with this object around September 26, 2011. However, this time, rather than being on the other side of the Sun, it will be much closer, and in between the Earth and the Sun, at a distance of 0 0.396 astronomical units. And, this time, it will be an alignment of four bodies, rather than just three, which will include Mercury, the Sun, Elenin, and the Earth. It is very possible that around this day we will have some major earthquake activity, the likes of which we have never seen before, which will be accompanied by the appearance of a third comet in our skies, known as Levy. Also worth mentioning here is that many of our sources suggest that around this time we will see the fulfillment of the prophesied three days of darkness, where the light from the sun will be obscured for approximately three days, after which time the sun will rise again. Though this may be possible, it is also possible that the three days of darkness will occur a little closer to the October 28th date, when we are nearer in proximity to the red star Kachina. That said, after our next alignment with Elenin around September 26th, there will be a series of other close passes between September 26th and November 23rd that could cause further shifting, including our closest pass with the object which would occur on October 17th, 2011 at a distance of 0 0.232 astronomical units. And an interesting event around November 3rd, when we would pass through the tail of Elenin. Worth noting here is that these dates will probably change somewhat, as it is assumed that Elenin will speed up significantly as it slingshots around the Sun before passing the Earth. Considering the approach of these celestial bodies, one possible interpretation of this information and how it relates to the Hopi prophecies of the blue and red Kachinas is that Honda and Levy are the nephews referred to in the prophecy as the guardians of the North and the South Poles, as Levy is coming from the North and Honda from the South. While Elenin is the blue star Kachina, which will be seen in the sky before and during the major earthquake at the end of September, and whose appearance in our heavens, the prophecies say, would mark the beginning of the changes and signify that we were in the end times. For the prophecies state that not far behind the twins will come the purifier, the red star Kachina, who will bring the great day of purification. Having accounted for Comet Levy and Honda as the guardians of the north and south, it is our belief that Comet Elenin, the blue star Kachina, is not a brown dwarf star, but rather that it is being followed very closely by one, or some other supermassive celestial body. And according to our understanding of the prophecies, this supermassive body that is following Elenin would be the red star Kachina, known as the Purifier, whose passing due to phenomenal gravitational and electromagnetic forces would change the existence of humanity and the Earth forever. 
For it is said in the prophecies that on the day of purification, the earth, her creatures, and all life as we know it will change forever. And that every living thing will be offered the opportunity to change from the largest to the smallest thing. It tells us that the way through this time is to be found in our hearts and through reuniting with our spiritual self. And then it reminds us that everything we experience is all a matter of choice. Thus echoing the choice of whether we will face the end of the material world as we know it with fear and denial, or whether we will choose to see its divine purpose with love and faith, and thereby return to the original way where every one and everything is seen as one and divine. Thus with this understanding of how the approaching comets relate to the Hopi prophecies of the blue and red Kachinas, one may also note how the dates of Elenin's closest interactions with Earth, occurring on September 26, October 17, and November 3, of 2011, strongly supports Kalaman's research which indicates that around October 28, 2011, we will experience the long prophesied end of the Mayan calendar and the birth of a new reality. I am ready for the next step in humanity's evolution. And now we will seek to unite with others. The time has come to live for each other. Having explored the possibilities of how the world could be greatly changed by October 28, 2011, let us now consider how the events that are set to unfold in the next few months could assist humanity in its evolution from a purely material-based perspective of existence to one more rooted in spirituality. As mentioned before, there are many people in the world today who because of their focus on material success and survival will not spare a second thought for their soul or spiritual self until they are faced with death suffering and the inevitable collapse of everything they have come to depend on in the material world. Thus, in accordance with the familiar phrase that it is always darkest before the dawn, it is our belief that in the coming months the world will be required to experience a level of death and destruction that will encourage its material-obsessed inhabitants to return to a more spiritual-based perspective of existence. And though it's understandable that the collapse of our material world and its systems could be quite a frightening experience, it is essential to understand here that those who learn to have faith in the spiritual purpose of these events will be given the tools and awareness that will allow them to face and flow through all of the challenges of the coming shift in relative grace and ease. We have been told that faith is the key. For when one learns to see that all beings and events exist for the divine purpose of encouraging us to seek and find that eternal peace inside with the way things are, then we may learn to see that all is, in fact, serving the divine, and therefore all is divine. And with this perspective, one may learn to move through the events of the coming months with a heart full of love and gratitude, rather than being consumed by hate and fear. And it is the power of this faith to bring us peace that is being referred to in the Hopi prophecy of the blue and red Kachinas, when it says, Life will get very perverted, and there will be little social order in these times. Many will ask for the mountains themselves to fall upon them just to end their misery, while still others will appear as if untouched by what is occurring, for they are the ones who remember the original teachings and who have reconnected their hearts and spirit. Having thus remembered the divine role that destruction may play in our spiritual evolution, let us now explore some of the potential challenges that could unfold in the next few months that might assist our soul's journey back to one. And remember here that it is not our intention with this presentation to prophesy events as they are going to occur, for it is our belief that our future is always changing in accordance with our willingness to learn new lessons and perspectives. That said, our intention herein is to merely present some possibilities of what events could occur that might lead to the collapse of the material world as we know it and to humanity's subsequent return to a spirit-based consciousness. So to many people whose perspective of the state of our world is molded by popular news and media, 
The idea that our entire material reality could collapse in the months between now and October 28, 2011, might seem like a sensationalist Hollywood film. What so few people realize is that the process is already well underway. In truth, a simple string of events whose elements are already in place could cause the toppling of our existing world systems within as little as a week or ten days. And though it may not look exactly like this, this is one possibility of how it could happen. All it would take is another staged terrorist attack in an American city similar to that of 9-11. Except this time, rather than airplanes, the damage would be delivered by a device called a suitcase nuke, which is a hypothetical suitcase-sized nuclear bomb, which has begun to receive a lot of mention in films and news reports within the popular media. If such a bomb were to go off in an American city, and the authorities were to link its creation to Iran, whom the U.S. is wrongfully accusing of developing nuclear weapons, in the same way that it accused Iraq of developing weapons of mass destruction, this would pave the way for a U.S.-led Allied attack on Iran, which would then mark the official beginning of World War III. In truth, this war has already begun with U.S.-led trade sanctions against Iran being imposed by the United Nations in an effort to cripple the country's military and economic production while the U.S. and its allies make preparations for war. It is also known that for some months now the U.S. has been amassing troops and weapons in Israel in preparations for a massive offensive in the Middle East. However, with the U.S. having recently reached its $14.3 trillion debt ceiling, with the dollar flagging and the euro near collapse, and with the U.S. already overextending itself in wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and Pakistan, its decision to engage in a world war, along with the crippling effects of the staged terrorist attack, would crush whatever faith remained in the U.S. market and result in the collapse of the American dollar, which would in turn begin the spiraling collapse of all the world economies. With world oil prices hovering at record highs, the Iranian president has promised that as soon as the first bomb drops on Iran, he will set the oil fields on fire. Thus, with the value of the euro and the dollar dropped through the floor, the flaming oil fields would result in the skyrocketing of gas prices, which would then lead to the inability to transport food and other goods around the world. Statistics indicate that without steady transport, most urban centers would be depleted of food and resources within three days. And as quickly as that, the world would be changed forever. However, there is much research which we will post on our webpage that indicates that these are just the beginning of a series of progressively intense and unfathomable events that have been designed to be so shocking that many people who are completely unaware of them will be desperate for any form of salvation. And it will be at the point of humanity's greatest desperation that those who have orchestrated these events will provide one self-serving solution, and that is to unite the globe under the authority of a new world order. Here are existing political, economic, and military institutions which unite under a one-world government, one-world economy, and one-world religion, which would offer to meet the immediate needs of humanity, providing food, money, and medicine, and even miracles, in exchange for complete obedience and subservience to the system. However, it is essential to understand here that even though the voice calling people to the New World Order may use the appealing words of unity, truth, and service, it will only be offering a temporary solution to the symptoms of humanity's suffering, along with promises to preserve a degree of comfort and security within a familiar system, where people are divided by the old world perspectives of good and evil.